Hello and welcome to the Monday, October 16th, 2023 edition of the Science and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I wrote a quick diary last Friday, just uh, talking a little bit about, uh, again, sort of what's normal, a little series that I started recently. And in this uh, particular case, well, what's normal with MAC addresses. There are a couple sort of odd things that you see with MAC addresses uh, once in a while, like uh, one IP address with multiple MAC addresses, or then also some, well, uh, sort of temporary MAC addresses that are not permanently assigned and that sort of don't show up in standard databases. Talked a little bit about this in this diary. If there is anything that I missed in that respect, uh, please let me know. And then we have a little bit of mystery that Guy observed in his honeypot logs that the mystery is around passwords being used. Now, we all know the standard top passwords, like you know, password 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the like. Well, uh, one uh, interesting thing that Guy observed was passwords that included domain names. Uh, now, not always sort of correct, uh, like in the form of an email address or such, like, for example, 123 at and then dot com. So not really a domain name like that. Not all of the domains that were used are resolvable, but some of them are resolvable. So just wondering uh, if this is like a common sort of default password pattern for some. It could be, and we have seen this sometimes of just a script that uh, is a bit mistaken in how it enters passwords at the telnet or ssh prompt but uh, yeah if you have any insight uh, please uh, let us know why we may see these passwords like others for example are also idcoffer.com and then miniair.com that may be sort of minor in uh, some non-english language uh, if you have any insight, yeah, please let us know because we have no idea really why attackers are attempting to use these passwords. And for iOS uh, users, there is a proof of concept exploit available on GitHub now that exploits a WebKit vulnerability patched late September. This is CVE 2023-41993. This was one of the vulnerabilities being patched that already had been exploited at the time. So having a proof of concept available for this vulnerability just makes the vulnerability much more accessible to other attackers. The proof of concept here does not actually implement and executing the final step, executing the code. So that's still basically left uh, to the user then uh, to fill in. And so far, a somewhat responsible uh, proof of concept. Also, not 100% reliable from what I've heard and seen on sort of Twitter uh, being posted. Still, uh, that should definitely make you apply these latest and recent patches uh, to iOS. The AWOS Locker ransomware has been sort of one of the increasing ransomware families late recently. Lots of victims uh, fell uh, to this uh, ransomware. The FBI and CISA now released a document with details about this uh, ransomware. They list some of the TTPs here used by this particular ransomware group. Also, lots of indicators of compromise here that uh, are being listed in the report. Just want to point out, it's yet again being pointed out here that you have to control RDP because that's one of the sort of initial access vectors being used by this uh, ransomware group. Also heavy emphasis in this particular advisory about uh, the use of PowerShell and logging and constraining some of that use. It may be a little bit more tricky to implement, but you know, please, please lock up our RDP. That's probably the, the single most common thing that I see noted here when it comes uh, to a ransomware. Let me have a report by Trend Micro that they're seeing Darkgate now spreading via Skype and Teams. The attacker here typically will take over one victim's Skype account and then inject uh, links uh, to the malicious software in existing Skype conversations. So the next victim will receive a message from a trusted partner, essentially asking it to click a link or uh, install some uh, software. 
Dark Gate by itself is a loader, so by itself it doesn't really do that much. It really more focuses then on installing additional malware, which uh, is of course often then a ransomware. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening. Thanks for liking this podcast. And thanks for giving it good reviews. And thanks, of course, always for subscribing. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.